the Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's guest, I want to let you know that the new version of the Forks Over Knives, I've never used a virtual screen before, so <laughs> this is my first time, uh, for the Forks Over Knives magazine. The fall issue comes out tomorrow, September 10th. It's a fabulous magazine with delicious whole food plant-based recipes, as well as photos for every recipe. And this issue... I don't know how to do this, guys. It's my first time. This is why I hate virtual screens. Well, I don't know if you can see that, but there's an article about me and an article about some of my favorite items. But I hope this will show these wonderful books that I have today. It's two people that wrote two books, but the books are a little bit the same, but yet they're different. And hopefully you can hold them up a little bit better than me. Please welcome to the show. They're going to make an amazing recipe, a quinoa burger with an amazing cheese sauce. This is Dr. T and Brooke Ali. Please welcome them to the show. Hello. 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 <laughs> I'm How Brooke. are you guys doing? Good. Good. And I'm yeah. Dr. T. Nice to meet you, everybody who's watching. Yeah. Well, we, we met before. We met in Marshall, Texas. We yeah, have. I sent you that picture. I know that was hilarious. That's a walk down memory lane. It's always weird. Like when I'm talking about something, all of a sudden I'll look at my phone and it'll be on my feed, the picture feed. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know whether it knew that I may have mentioned your name or something, but it came up and I thought, well, that's really odd. I just finished talking with her and now it came up on my feed. And I haven't seen that picture in a number of years. Is that called synchronicity or serendipity? So. Something like that. Like, yeah, one of those S words. Yeah. It's funny. So, we both have your book with your signature in it from the same place. Yes. But we didn't know each other then. No. That's funny. Well, how did you guys come to know each other? And how did you write such similar looking yet different books? That's right. All right. Well, should I start? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I, have a, I used to have a vegan restaurant, but we closed due to COVID. And basically, I wanted something that people could go and eat real plant-based food that doesn't have a lot of added stuff to it because I feel like that's a thing you know it's not easy to eat out in a vegan restaurant and actually get something that doesn't have added oils and all the other good stuff but um I'm also allergic to gluten so we had everything in there that was gluten-free as well and um COVID came so we were really young and ended up closing down but before that Patricia was going to be hosting the food as medicine summit and um, our restaurant was going to be catering that one of the events. And so that's how, how we kind of started. Mm -hmm. And then when I closed, I reached out to her and I was like, I was trying to figure out different things we could do at the restaurant. And I'm like, what if we did a food bank? And she had been um, a CEO of like different um, nonprofits like Girl Scouts and Red Cross. Red Cross. And so I thought she would know. And so we kind of ended up talking and ended up doing, putting the Food as Medicine Summit online. And then um, did, we both had written books and we we're like, we should write our books after we finish that. And so I did the vegan 20. And then um, I also did the recipes and Patricia did. Whole food plant-based 20. Yeah. And so they just kind of stepped you through the whole process where understanding what veganism is and then going through that and, and showing recipes and easy ways to make different foods. And then mine takes you to the more the health aspect and really goes into um, the health aspects of eating healthy and why all the science behind it. Very yeah. cool. Nice. Where was your restaurant located, Brooke? Plano, Texas. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Weird as it kitchen. Oh, that would it's be so cool. a restaurant like that. It was really yeah. cool. We, we would go there every week and um, we became, <laughs> but, but she yeah. also, um, you know, to Brooke's uh, success, she, she was very um, conscious of really mixing restaurants. So you wouldn't just go there to eat. You would go there to experience um, different learning opportunities and guest speakers. And she actually had me come on and I did a cooking demo and she had a lot of different folks from the neighborhood and from the community come in so it was really kind of a community-based um, yeah. restaurant. Really loved it a lot. And uh, we were sad to see it go. But she did a whole series of the PCRM courses mm -hmm. at the restaurant mm -hmm. and filled it up with a ton of people. So that was fun. Yeah, she, yeah. she, turned, she turned her restaurant over to a, you know, a whole, which that was four weeks, mm -hmm. four week class. Yeah. Um, so we had people in there. Every Saturday. Really, every Saturday, good. we had to rearrange the whole thing. <laughs> 
Um, wow, that, that sounds amazing. Uh, Tiffany, who's watching, says your cookbooks are fantastic. She's oh. given them as gifts. And that Dr. T and Brooke Ali are some of my favorites. So you've got some fans in the house. Oh. We love we love Tiffany. Tiffany is awesome. She's an amazing chef as well. Yeah, she actually. is. She is. Well, I think she's booked on my show, actually, now that I think oh, about good. it. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> So that works out perfectly. Yeah. But, you know, as great as it is to have a restaurant, and it sounds amazing the way you create a community. It's hard work. People don't, you know, people will say, well, open a restaurant is if like, it's really some of the hardest work there is. I mean, all work is hard, I suppose, but it's like, it's like 24 seven. Cause like you can't, you, even when you're not there, you're there because, you know, it's very hard. And tiring and yeah i'm 52 so i i was like it, it's different than when i was younger and worked in a restaurant compared to actually running it and doing all the background part of it as well but i loved it so much i just felt like it was more of a service to everybody and and giving back that way mm -hmm. but um you know that chapter isn't completely closed i've had other opportunities to do other restaurants but i'm still thinking about it because it has to be something really healthy and just figuring out a way to make it so that mainstream will still take it in and you know, we'll see where it goes. But in the meantime, um, I think it's, we're having a blast with just sharing our recipes and you know, doing classes and we've done some community events here as well. And I think- you guys first become plant-based? Well, I did over 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. about I, think. The same, I think it's about yeah. the same time, 12 years ago, um, me too. And um, I think we both did it for health reasons. Yeah, I, I can. In, no, maybe, maybe you didn't. Uh, at first. No, I did it for health reasons. Yeah, I did yeah. it because I, you know the Nelsons. Of course, they had. They. Um, I went to an event that they hosted, and the first vegan meal that I had ever had was with um, Chef Tanya. She had served it there, and Dr. McDougall was there. Did you and go to the Healthy Lifestyle Expo? It was not the expo. They had this fundraiser in some mansion in Beverly Hills. I was do I was working there. I was the one that made the cupcakes. That was at Ellen Laventhal's house, and it was it was for I believe it was for Meals for Health. In Beverly. yes, yes. Like <laughs> Jeff had done a documentary on these people, and they got up and spoke about how they went off their you know um, their medication for high cholesterol, type two diabetes, the um, their any issues that they had. The our first world kind of um, illnesses, they all went away and they lost weight, their depression went away, their IBS, IBD, all that stuff. And I was like, what? How is that possible? I had no idea that food could do that for you. And so I went vegan that day and um, never haven't looked back. That's amazing. I love, I, it's so funny how so many stories are literally overnight, even, you know, even the doctors, well, I saw the, I saw forks over knives, I read the China study and boom. And that's how it is for so many people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I, I was vegan for a while and then I, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism. And I was like, I really don't want to take medication. And so I just cleaned up my diet to more, you know, like what you eat. And um, I have a lot more raw combined with but just a lot of salads and um, fruits and vegetables and not a, really no added oils, but I'll do, you know, like healthy fats, like nuts and seeds and avocados, but that was enabled me to not have to go on any medication. Like I was on it for a, a short stint, stabilized my, my thyroid, went off, and then every six months I'd get it um, checked and it's been fine. That's amazing. So, yeah, and then your story is really compelling too. So my dad, um, actually my book is dedicated to my dad um, because at age 59, he ended up having a quadruple bypass. And then at age 71, he succumbed to heart disease, um, despite the fact that he thought he was following his doctor's orders to a T. You know, they said, just take the skin off your chicken and have skim milk and eat cottage cheese. And he was Italian, so he ate a lot of cheese, but he always ate the light um, part skin mozzarella and all of that. So anyway, um, I knew that after he had died, I knew that that was in my family. And so I didn't know what to do about it, but the doctor said, you can't do anything about it, it's genetics. Take these statins and we'll put you on anti-cholesterol medicine and all that and that'll be good. And so one day I'm driving home from Houston and I hear Dr. Furman being grilled by like Dr. Oz and a bunch of other people on his show. And he just held his own and he was talking about the healing properties of food. I'm like, what, um, what is he talking about? And we 
basically pulled over at the Barnes and Nobles and got out and got his book, Eat to Live. And I read it from cover to cover that night and the next day. And after that, I never, I never ate another animal product again and just started that whole journey. And it was a very exciting. My husband was doing it with me. So that really helped a lot. And um, all my friends and family thought I was completely insane, um, but I didn't care. <laughs> I, I didn't want to succumb. And I felt like I can take, that's what's amazing about this whole way of eating is that you can take control of your body and your health and not be a victim. Um, not to say that this diet, this way of eating, this lifestyle is bulletproof, but it really does help put that bulletproof vest on at least, you know, you may get hit somewhere else, but at least it's not going to kill you. So, and your quality of life is going to be oh my so gosh. much better. Yeah. Yeah. You bet. So you're going to make, make it hit a, somewhere oh, else, but at least it's not going to kill you. Yeah. So I, I love your life. is going to be oh so my gosh. much better. Yeah. I love that. It's sort of like, oh, I was it. I can't remember if it was Dr. Greger or Kim Williams who said, I, I know I'm going to die. I just don't want it to be my fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> So you're, you're going to be making spicy quinoa burgers with a nacho cheese sauce. And this was a recipe from the restaurant, Brooke? Yes. Yeah. The, um, the, the, we have a nacho cheese sauce in here, which is made with cashews. But I decided to change it up a little and do it with sunflower seeds for people that have allergies to nuts. And that way they can see the difference. And um, it's something that we had tried and true. There are a lot of restaurants that do nacho cheese sauces. And they add oil to it, but you really don't need to. And, and what I've noticed is like throughout the day, it'll start to get, you know, like if you have it on the warmer and you're serving it all day long, you just have to add water so that you can keep it that smooth consistency. You don't need the oil to keep it like that. And um, we had all different kinds of people because everything that we made in the restaurant was from scratch. So we got to test it out over and over and over until it got just completely perfect because there are times like you can make it and it can taste a little grainy and um there you know it's it's not a hard thing to do but it's good to know exactly the best you know steps because we all love our cheese right yeah, absolutely <laughs> how often have we heard I'd, I'd be vegan but i can't give up cheese but now there's no excuse because there's so much cheese out there that's vegan that you you can i mean you can't you can't miss that in the supermarket anymore. There's so many options. Yeah. I always tell people, don't, don't do it for, you know, because of that, just go into the supermarket and start sampling the different kinds of cheeses and see if you can find one that replaces that for you and gives you that same enjoyment and feel and taste. So, and um, even small towns, I mean, it's, it's, you can hmm. find it everywhere. Walmart has it 99 cent store. It's, it's everywhere. No it's excuse everywhere. anymore. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. That's cool. It's um, wild. So do you want to get cooking? Sure, I can start. I'm just doing a very simple one. It's it is pretty quick. Um, let's see if I can bring oh tilt this once to show you all the ingredients that I have down here. And um, this is the nutritional yeast and the sunflower seeds all in that. And then pimentos are also the secret. And then you've got lemon juice, um, paprika onion powder, cumin, and garlic. You can never have too much garlic, right? <laughs> and are, you a, are you a fan of it? Shelley? I am. I mean, I mean, that's why when people have onion and garlic sensitivities or allergies, I'm like, I don't know what to do with you. I mean, it's so difficult, you know, because to yeah. me, that's the foundation of cooking onion and garlic. It really does make it taste so much better. And um, so what I'm going to do is you can soak your seeds overnight or just like four hours, up to four hours. But if you have a Vitamix, you really don't need to because it's a high powered um, mixer. And um, you just put, um, you know what? I'm gonna go grab, do, will you grab some water for mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. um, just four cups of water. Four cups. So, yep. So I have here four cups of raw sunflower seeds. I'm gonna pour those in on that side by the glasses. Let's see, I don't think she's gonna be able to reach it. It's probably really high up there. Did she find it? So how come you guys wrote your book kind of separate? We had, I did the recipes for both books and um, we ended up creating or forming a company called Wellness 20. And so really we're, we're selling them together and promoting them together as a team. Um, and we published them pretty much around the same time. And there she just added four cups, two cups. Okay, so she's gonna bring four cups. 
And um, the reason it's called Wellness 20 is because anybody can do hopefully 10 push-ups, but if you- Not me, <laughs> unfortunately, but yeah. Yeah, and it, but then if you push it to 20, you know, that's like taking it to the next level. And so that's how the, the books are written where we have like lists of 20 things, you know, like 20 different egg replacers, 20 you could do are, are like substitutes to meat or protein substitutes or 20 different um, ways to create a bowl. And, and so it's not just recipes in the back, but it's also a lot of ways to combine your different in ingredients that you actually like and create um, something. So like one page, you could te technically make a hundred different recipes out of. Um, just because I'm more creative with food and I like to have that the flexibility, but not everyone does. So that's why we have recipes as well. Beautiful. You have a good balance. All right. So that's the sunflower seeds. And then the famous nutritional yeast, which is great because it has the B12 in it and it makes it, gives it that cheesy flavor. And then we've got the garlic. You have a favorite brand of nutritional yeast, bro? I just, I buy the one at Sprouts that over by the, where they have all the vitamins and everything. Um, I can't remember. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like a big canister. Mm -hmm. So that way, you know, it's about 20 bucks, but it'll mm -hmm. last you forever. Mm -hmm. And then in the restaurant, we would just order it in bulk too. So that's the onion powder. And then you can do fresh lemon or um, you can just buy the, the lemon juice at Costco that's made out of real lemons. I know my dad loves to just add that to his water. And that's, you know, it's good for you. You got the paprika. You can do smoked paprika if you want and cumin. My husband's Indian. So I have a lot of, I love spices, Indian spices and stuff like that. And then the pimentos. And this is a really big batch. You can cut it in half and if, depending on how, who you're cooking for. But what I like to do is make it and then freeze half of the batch and have it in the, you know, like for later and then have half of it in the fridge because you can put it on top of a big potato, sweet potato, you could put it in tacos, you could fries. add it oh, over fries. Um, and you don't need a lot, but it just gives you that creamy, you know, kind of cheesy flavor. Any kind of veggies. Any veggies. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, I mean, there's so, I used it in so many different ways. Yeah. When I had a whole bunch of it, I got and, creative. Rice. Oh yeah, rice. Yeah. So yeah, I just have in the fridge, like what I like to do is make, um, one or two different sauces in the week and then just use it throughout the week for whatever, um, whatever I'm making with a type of bowl. And then I have something to add into it. Or if I'm really like not able to make too much stuff, I'll go to whole foods and buy the oil free dressings that they have in the produce area and just add that to my bowls. So I'm do not going to, do they still have oil free? Cause I, I some of the whole foods, it seems like they don't anymore. The one here in Texas does, mm -hmm. but it could be different. Um, I think that they vary so much regionally. Yeah. That's a shame that they wouldn't oh. know in California. Cause I thought yeah. I had died and gone to heaven when I walked in and I said, this has no oil in it. And there's like three different kinds of dressings. Yeah. They have a tahini one and an avocado one. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. Maybe different whole foods have different things. Cause I know what you're talking about, but I haven't seen it in a while. Huh, that's too bad. And then I'm not gonna blend it the whole time, but I just um, blend it. Blend it on high for about six minutes until it feels hot. And then it's, and it's also well combined. If you're doing the cashews, you have to do it longer, like more closer to 10 to 15 minutes. And then once it's blended, you, um, put it in a, a saucepan and just cook it for about five to 10 minutes. And that helps it to thicken. And um, it, that way it's no longer grainy or anything, um, but it's perfect sauce. And then you can just store it in your fridge for easily up to a week. And it stays in the freezer really well as pretty well as, as well, pretty well as well. <laughs> can everybody see the, you know, it, it turns that kind of like golden, the golden -y color. Yeah. Um, well, it's not completely yeah, it's mixed, not completely but I'm sure you yet. don't want to listen to the blender. I mean, we could well, actually, actually, Zoom's been muting the sound, so it's not too bad. Oh, wow, that's nice. What? So, wow, I didn't know it could do that. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't know if that would 
that would be exciting uh, video <laughs> to watch. <laughs> to watch. It's kind of like watching paint dry, watching yeah. the blender blend. But um, anyway, okay. All right. So now you are on. All right. I'll do the. I'm going to scoot over. Okay. So this next recipe is so really when I went vegan or plant based, one of the things that I thought I was going to miss was uh, were, were burgers. And so I have been on a quest for, you know, finding a good burger recipe that is made with um, vegetables, beans mostly, and there's lentils, et cetera. So I've, I've found many, many different kinds. And this one that I'm going to make today is one of my favorites. Um, the, the one that Brooke put into my book it, because it's so easy. And really, if you find a good burger, uh, vegan burger recipe, you can really make it your own. Once you find the basic components of it, you can switch it up. So this is not um, this is not the only burger recipe. You know, you could take this burger recipe and really make it your own. And I'll show you how you know different um, ingredients that you can add to make that. But the, the thing that's easy about this is you make it in one one big fell swoop. But I am going to do one thing first because every good burger um, needs a good binder. So I'm going to use chia seeds, okay? And when chia seeds, if you've seen those chia pets. Um, <laughs> I used to have a Scooby-Doo chia pet. I used to have a Scooby-Doo yeah. one. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Hey, uh, like, Dr. Yeah. Dr. T, Joy wants to know what kind of doctor are you and are you practicing anywhere? Oh, okay. I am not a medical doctor. I'm a PhD. I have a PhD in biology and specifically environmental toxicology. And so I work for um, the EPA and Department of Health and protecting human health as well as uh, wildlife as well um, from toxic substances. So everything that we do these days uh, produces some kind of toxic substance. And I did some work up in California too at the Travis Air Force Base. Um, well, you have, a, you have a slight accent. Are you from somewhere not other than Texas? <laughs> oh, you know, I don't have a Texas twang. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I am from New York originally. I was going to say, that's what I thought. Born and lived there for quite a while, but then I came down to Texas to get my doctorate. And that's where I met my Texan husband who really doesn't have an accent. He doesn't have a Texan accent. Um, and then moved back up to New York, dragged him up back to the Northeast and lived up there for a while. And then we're back in Texas now for the past like 17 years where we raised our, we promised our kids when we had them up in New York that we're moving to Texas and they'll all get horses. And so they jumped in the car and moved down with us. And then when we got there, they were like, where are our horses? So we got them to labs and we said, these are the horses. <laughs> you know, it's interesting toxicology. I mean, people of course should be worried about toxins, but food is toxic these days. And a lot yeah. of people don't worry about what they're putting in their mouth. Yes, it, it, it is. And that's really kind of why I think this really meshed with me, this whole field, because it is about, you know, having too much uh, of, a, of a bad thing can be deadly to you. Um, and it's not just a matter of just a little bit, um, because a little bit can hurt. You know, a little bit of mercury is not good. Um, a little bit of DDT is not good. And so I really, uh, my background really helped me understand the full impact of, you know, what you put in your body and on your body and that, that it can have a, a tremendous effect. Um, so back to the chia seeds and the chia pets, you know, that it really was a disgrace that we were taking this beautiful, beautiful seed that has such amazing uh, nutritional power and we were using it on some clay pottery and just throwing it out. Because um, if you have some chia seeds to your diet every day, uh, you're getting great omega-3s, um, you're getting healthy fats, and your body needs fat. And that's something that's very, very important. Um, if without fat, you know, you, you, you cannot process the things in your body the way that it should be. And your cells won't get the nutrition that it needs. So for the chia seeds, they are a binder. And so to do this, you just mix one tablespoon of chia seeds with three tablespoons of water. And we're gonna let that sit there for a little while. And then that, what happens is you'll see it'll, it'll becomes a gel. And that's going to be the binder for our, for our burgers. And you can use flax seed as well, but for this one, we're using chia seeds. So I'm going to put that aside. And in the meantime, I'm going to get the ingredients, which are really, really simple. Um, that's what I love about these burgers. And plus they, and I'll show you, they freeze really well. And you can actually make them and not even cook them and freeze them. 
or you can cook them and freeze them. Either That's way, that's interesting because I, I get that question a lot, and I've always cooked them first just because they're more you know sturdy. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize yeah. you could cook them. I mean, not freeze them. Freeze them. Not cook yeah. Them. Um, so I, I I've been doing this. <laughs> doing these, these demos and, and kind of mixing it up a little bit and uh, looking at different ways to how, how long do they last? Um, you know, in the freezer, they'll last up to six months, I think. Um, plus the thing about cooking plant-based is that your food doesn't go bad as quickly as when you're using animal products, I'm finding. Um, and I think both people are finding out. So the basis of this burger are black beans and you can use either, if you want to cook them from scratch, that's fine or you can use them from cans. If, if time is, a, is an essence of, for you, you want to, you can take them from a can, but I always rinse my beans because you rinse off all the stuff that went through the processing of those beans. So rinse them, rinse them uh, thoroughly. And it's just one can of beans, black beans. And, and, you know, so what I was telling you about how it, it could be a basis. Now you can substitute different kinds of beans and explore those depending on what you really like. And then the second ingredient, and these, this is really the two main ingredients. So you can see how cost-effective this is. It's much cheaper than going to In-N-Out Burger, that's for sure. Or even go to a vegan burger place where you're gonna get a lot of oil and processed, um, processed ingredients. This is something that you can make right at home. Half a cup of uncooked quinoa, okay? Um, so, I, oh my gosh, I just realized what I did. Oh, you put that in. I left the rest of it at home, but anyway, don't worry about it. So it's a half a cup of uncooked quinoa. Mm -hmm. And so what I did when I was packing, I took a half a cup of the cooked quinoa. Oh. So what you want to do is the half a cup of uncooked quinoa, you want to cook that. Now I make it in the pressure cooker. And so you would take one cup, um, one half cup of uncooked quinoa, and then you do it with to a one half cup of water and you put it in the pressure cooker for one minute. And then you let it come down to natural pressure for 10 minutes and you get the perfect quinoa every single time. I know quinoa. I mean, it is so, e it's full it in a pressure cooker. It really it's is crazy. It's so easy. And then yeah. plus quinoa is another one. It's not really actually a grain. It's actually a seed. Um, and people, it, but it, we, we put it in the grain family, but it's so packed with protein and tremendous nutritional value. So, you know, I like to add that to my salads and, you know, to my um, tacos and whatever. And you, it really does take up the flavors that you use when you, you cook with spices and it's easily frozen as well. So you can freeze them in, in little containers and stuck, stick that in your freezer. Um, so you can actually do a lot of good food prep that way. So what I'm gonna do is pop the quinoa in here. And then the next ingredient um, are a bunch of spices. So, and this is where you can really make it your own as well. If you like curry, you can put curry, make these curry burgers. Um, you can make it more Mexican and add some different kinds of like chipotle, chili powder, et cetera. But for this one, we have um, a half a teaspoon each of onion powder, chili powder, cumin, and smoked paprika. And I mix that all together and pop that in there. So I use these jars. So Brooks got me on these jars because she used so many pimentos with her nutritional, with her um, nacho cheese that we just wash these out and um, recycle them. And I'm using them to transport my food for cooking demos. And they really work out very good. And I feel like I'm doing something good for the environment. And then of course, like we said before, you can't have too much garlic. So it's two cloves of smashed garlic. And it's really important to smash your garlic because that activates it. All the important ingredients that are in that it's in garlic that's really going to cause that antioxidant, anti-cancer behavior. You got to smash smash your your garlic right before you cook it or eat it, um, and that activates it. And then what I love is I love these um, uh, pickled jalapenos. So you can put fresh jalapeno in or chipotle peppers uh, if you if you would like. Or you could put um, some other kind of chili pepper that you uh, prefer. But these pickled jalapenos, um, they just have that little vinegary twang to them. And you just get them in the store, make sure they don't have oil in them. My husband loves these as well. So I'm going to pop some of that in there. And that just really gives it a good, a really good taste. And then I'm going to add some um, breadcrumbs. So you, if you're not gluten sensitive, you can add your regular breadcrumbs, but it's a quarter cup of that. But I made my own. Um, I just basically took gluten-free bread without oil. I actually order it from Mario's, which is in California. 
Um, they have great online bread that you can order. And uh, this is one of their breads. And I just toasted it, put it in the food processor and make my own gluten-free bread, bread crumbs. So it's a quarter cup of that um, added in here. And then I'm going to pulse this. Oh, the car keys. Um, oh, they're in that little green bag okay. in the big part. And then you're going to process this at first. It's going to pulse it. And, and you want to have chunks. Okay, so that's that's chunked. Now I'm going to add, go ahead and add the, uh, the chia seed because now it's nice and thick. You can see that. It's nice and gelled. Every little seed. I always try to get every little seed because I feel like it's dedicated its whole life. And I want to make sure that every single bean, every single seed is used. But I'm not going to do that right now because that's not good television either. <laughs> Not good television. Okay, let's see. I'll process that. And see how easy there's so so few ingredients, and you could take these burgers over to a picnic. There's a spoon. Like a, uh, um, sure. That's good. Thank you. It's nice to be in someone's kitchen where. <laughs> and actually, that looks good. I'm going to take this out. That it sticks. I know, mine does too. I just have to wiggle it and then get that inside out. See, it's a, I'm all in one container. So I haven't really made a mess, have I? Well, I've made a mess, but I haven't really made a mess. Your, these are your burger, your burger dough, I call it. Kind of like cookie dough, but it's burger dough. And I'm just gonna show you how um, nice and sticky it is. And then you're gonna make your patties and you can make them as big as you want. And I like my burgers small, but my husband likes the burgers big. So I make a combination of them and it, they hold up really well on the grill. He likes some big because he's from Texas. That's right. <laughs> do you ever, do I, you ever cook them in the air fryer? I do that sometimes to get a yeah, little bit crisp. Them in the air fryer. And so this is what I do. I like that idea. Um, I haven't tried the burgers in the air fryer. I make my I make my French fries in the air fryer, but I take parchment paper. And so these are still not cooked, right? So then I take the parchment paper like that, and then I fold it over or cut another piece or whatever. And then I stack them and then I stick them right into the freezer so they don't stick together. So if you want to, so that way they're not cooked yet. And if you want them like that, that's fine. But then if you want to cook them, how do you cook them? So you can do the air fryer. That's a really great idea. Or you can pop them in the, um, on the, in the oven. And that's basically how I do it. Or you could even do it in the toaster oven and you cook them for like 10, 15 minutes on each side, just until they're nice and crispy on the outside, but they're still moist on the inside because you don't want them too dry. Um, or you could cook them on your stovetop uh, as well. And the same thing, you're just gonna fry them without oil, just cook them in a nonstick pan if that's something that you use. And that's kind of why I don't do it on the stovetop unless I have a good pan that I know it's not gonna stick to, but I like to put them in the oven because then I can cook all of them at the same time. Mine, my process is all about time efficiency. I like to get things done quick. So any method I can cook multiple um, servings of, that's great because then I can take them all out. You can do the same thing once you cook them. Um, actually, I have one that's cooked here. And this is um, this has been browned. So you just want them lightly, lightly charred and you can put them on the grill as well. I've cooked them on the grill and then you put all your toppings. And so I have... Um, these are good buns. These, these are not gluten free. So if you do not, if you don't eat gluten, this is not for you, but you can either make your own buns or put them on gluten free bread. 
um, if you want to make a traditional hamburger, but this is Dave's Killer's Bread, and uh, I like it. Um, I don't eat gluten either. I try to stay away from it, but you know, you're just going to put your burger on a traditional burger bun, and you're going to dress it up any way you want, and so with the cheese sauce, what we do is we'll put the burger on our bun, toasted bun, and then put that cheese sauce right on top and put your toppings, relish. I like relish, ketchup, mustard, um, lettuce, tomato, and then you have your, your big burger. So those are, um, let's see, what else was I gonna say about the burger? Oh, so that burger is so versatile um, because I've been making a lot of them lately because I've been doing some cooking demos <laughs> for our book. And so we've been doing the burger recipe. And so I have a lot of burgers, but I started experimenting like what I did one time was I baked a potato and then I crumpled the burger into the potato. So now I have quinoa in there, black beans um, and the potato. And then I put some nacho cheese sauce over that. Oh my gosh, that was so good. Um, but that's, I'm so hungry. <laughs> but that's one way. Um, and also you can just take your burger and crumple it in a salad um, and make some vegan ranch dressing and put that over there. Um, but there's so many, and you can put them on a taco. So there's lots of, this is such a, once you know how to do a good burger and a good cheese sauce. Oh yeah. That, that, yeah, absolutely. Hey, I'm glad you're back, Brooke, because there's a couple of questions about your thyroid. So uh, let's see, Tammy says, what are you doing now to keep your thyroid in check? And there was another question from Marcy. Did you have to start eating algae or seaweed in order to fix your thyroid? I do have that in my multivitamin every day. And I also add it to food as much as possible. And algae and seaweed is, is really important. I, I, it seems like it works really well for a lot of people. And that's, you know, you're getting your iodine as well. And um, Dr. Brooke Goldner was saying to use iodized salt, which I before was using regular sea salt. And so I think just having iodized salt also has helped if you use salt. I don't, I know you, I don't, do you use salt? Yeah, no, I, you know, I don't add it, but I mean, I have, there's certain products that have it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm honestly not perfect, but I know what you mean. And I have hypothyroidism and I wish I was a healthier vegan when I was diagnosed. I was, I was a vegan, but I wasn't eating quite this clean. And I had not yet heard of True North where I probably, you know, maybe could have fixed it like you, but at a certain point, once you've been on medication, you really can't get off it because your thyroid doesn't know how to produce it anymore. But yeah. I, don't take it, I don't take it as a moral failing. And at least the medication for thyroid is one drug that insurance companies do not discriminate against you for, you know what I mean? Because it's like so cheap. <laughs> Like, yeah, I did it. I only was on it for six months, which made, and it was the lowest dose. So it may not work for everybody to go completely off of it. I just asked my doctor if I could try because I still didn't feel better with the medication, um, with, with taking the, I was taking Synthroid and, um, I was also, she had me on a, like an antidepressive as well. Cause it made me depressed. And I was like, oh, this, you know, like the side effects of the medication just, I didn't like it. So I'm like, can I just try it and see if I would feel better? She's like, why not? And um, when, so th there's a lot of different ways you can do it as far as um, with your thyroid. One was a vegan um, macrobiotic diet. So a lot of root vegetables and um the, and then also you had like the seaweed in there as well, you know, in kombu and stuff like that. So that helps. And another way is do, doing more raw. So I basically have combined my diet where it's a raw, a smoothie in the morning. And it's like, as far as the, I put like 75% of it is raw spinach. And then I add fresh strawberries, a couple of bananas and either flaxseed or chia seed to get the omega threes. And all of those are super healing for our cells. And um, so it really helps whatever, whatever it is that you're suffering from, it helps kind of like flush those, those hyper nourishment into your body, you know, right first thing in the morning. And then for lunch, I'll do a salad, but I like to do the chopped salad. And like you, uh, you have a video with the, the mm -hmm. bowl, the wooden bowl. Yeah, the Holland bowl. I love chopped salad because I have TMJ and it's just so much easier to get in your mouth when it's little. And you can get so much more in. Mm -hmm. when you it's so that. much easier to eat more vegetables when they're smaller. That's why, you know, like if you, cooking them makes them smaller too. Like I can't imagine eating a pound of raw kale unless it was cooked or chopped. Yeah. So, and I tried eating, you know, like those big salads and I just, you know, after a while, I'm like, I just can't do it. And it just felt like a chore. And then once I got the chopper and the bowl and everything, it just, it seemed so much, 
more manageable. And then at night I'll do a cooked meal, which is more of like a, a macrobiotic bowl. So I'll have maybe tofu, um, uh, for a while I was sensitive to tofu, but now I can, I can have it, um, like once or twice a week. And then I'll put, so like some carrots, some kale, uh, mushrooms and any other vegetables like bok choy and, um, put those in the, in the frying pan, no added oil. If you do want, like sometimes like a couple drops of sesame oil gives it a different flavor, which is nice. And then you can do tomorrow, like literally drops, like not even, you know, just like tiny little, like literally three drops. And then um, tamari, it, because that's a uh, gluten-free soy sauce. And um, then I add like an Eden shake to it, which has seaweed in it. And it has a little bit of salt and it also has sesame seeds. And so that's something that I just buy at Whole Foods and shake that mm -hmm. on top. And it's, um, you can add like a little bit more water. So you have a broth, so you can do like a veggie broth in there if you want, or if you have your own homemade broth. But I mean, that's pretty much how I eat. And I noticed that when I, it's not um, like once you feel better or heal it, essentially heal it, it's not 100% healed. I noticed that when I travel and if I'm eating out and I eat at a lot of vegan restaurants that, you know, I'm just eating like burgers and the different, you know, more kind of fun vegan food, I'll start feeling it again. Like my joints will feel inflamed and um, I'll start feeling more tired. Um, and so I know, okay, I need to get back and eat um, more clean. So like, we're gonna be traveling um, to Florida. So we, we already have packed, we're figuring out what we're gonna take with us that we can eat in our hotel room so that we don't have to eat out as much while we're there. Because otherwise it's just like, I, and I will start to feel it in my health if I don't stay mm -hmm. on that. And I, and I do too. I, I had thyroid cancer. Um, and so I'm a survivor of that. So I don't even have a thyroid anymore. Um, but what's awesome. My doctor has told me, even though I don't think he believes in the whole food plant-based lifestyle, but he <laughs> keeps exclaiming how he has to keep lowering my synthroid because, hmm. um, my body's just doing its own thing. Like it's figuring it out. It doesn't need as much. Um, so I'm happy with that because I have to take Synthroid since I don't have a thyroid. I don't have any option, um, but I've healed tremendously from it. And I have to say that, you know, I've adopted that macrobiotic. I throw that in a couple of times a week. Um, and that really, really does help. And I had, you know, gluten, I have gluten sensitivity. I'm not allergic to it, but I definitely have sensitivity since my thyroid has been removed. I didn't have it before then. Um, so I'm just careful with that. And if I do eat uh, um, gluten, I can definitely feel it in my joints as well. Oh yeah. So, I can't do gluten. It just throws mm -hmm. me off completely. Yeah. It'll take months to get over, mm -hmm. but this not to advertise anything. This is the vitamin I take. It's called gem and it has like these, it's all made with real food. And so you can see how it has like the algae and the dates and different things in it. And so that's one way that I make sure I get it, but it has spirulina, mushrooms, red algae, semen rolls, chlorella, ashw well, ashwagandha is in there. But I, I, I try and get it in different ways, you know, add it into my smoothie as well. It looks like a little candy. It does. Yeah, it is. It's so good. <laughs> Although I gave it to my daughter and she was like, <laughs> she hated it. Oh, that's funny. This is absolutely beautiful. This Is this what the burger is going to look like? The cover? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, uh, Dr. T, there's a couple of questions just to clarify. It was cooked quinoa you put in, correct? That's Not right. raw. Yeah. yeah. And then we have a question about, is it possible where to go to substitute oat flour in place of breadcrumbs? Terry wants to know. Absolutely. Yep. And then from Donna, should we grind the chia seeds or leave them whole? So I make them without grinding them. Um, so if you want to get the full nutritional value from the chia seeds, because you know, it's, it's not easily digestible. Um, you can grind them first if you want to put them in, but I used, I just used whole. Yeah. You just want to make sure that whenever you're having chia seeds or flax seeds that you grind it right mm -hmm. before you eat it. Like mm -hmm. you don't want to buy pre ground mm -hmm. because it won't, it, it, it's already missing a lot of the, uh, the benefits. benefits of it. Yeah. Let's see. Um, uh, they, Stephanie says, what is the vitamin name that you said? Could you please say it again? Oh, this one, Gem. I don't know if you want me to advertise. I, I just found them on Instagram and I was like, interesting. And I actually, I I've tried a lot of different ones and this one works. 
that's on the, I just spilled my, my beverage all over myself. Thank you very much. So when did the book come out? Or the books, actually? This year, it's like past spring. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we've been having, <laughs> we've been having. I figured out how to hold them and get them both to be seen just like this. Um, but you could get, you can purchase them on Amazon and, but you can also purchase them on our website. So if you purchase them on Amazon, we get a smaller, you know, percentage of it. Um, but we actually did our own design and we designed our own books and we did the color, the photography. Actually, my daughter did my uh, cover photography and, um, and then we had uh, an editor help us um, with the cover, with the yeah. cover, you know, put the covers together the way that it's supposed to have a binder and all that. That's my son's hand holding a burger. Oh, <laughs> so we have our children throughout the hall, you know, they're, they're always in there. They're always got, got their angle in there. That's uh, hilarious. A uh, question is, chia, are chia seeds digestible in a plant milk? Like if you're making a breakfast pudding? Not if it, only if you chew it, you would want you. Would, so like if you do whole chia seeds and you soak it mm -hmm. overnight or like for a few hours, it's still, mm -hmm. it's, it will digest better if it's, pre-ground but it just doesn't look as pretty yeah nice. so you just gotta do it just don't just don't swallow it all whole yeah <laughs> do each of you have a favorite recipe in the book mm. I, i'll say mine um and i'll show you a little bit about the book if you have time if we have time um i used to speak publicly about our um our food and how it affects our environment the animals and our health and i felt and what i found was people would want to go plant-based for three different reasons. And, and it would some food for their health, some because of the planet and others because of the animals. And so I wanted to have um, a really clear, concise explanation in here of why it's beneficial for all those three reasons and how it affects, um, it's, it's, it's amazing how um, it's like so karmic, you know, mm -hmm. because just like how, when we don't, when we eat animal products, it's, it's also bad for the environment, which, then affects our survival on the planet. And um, if you want to impact climate change in a way to reduce it, um, eating plant-based cuts it by at least 51%, if not up to 78%, depending on where you get your food from. So if it's locally sourced, that kind of thing, then you're gonna get higher up to the 78%. And um, it, the reason that it's so impactful is because if you just take um, like our population, we're 7.8 billion now, I believe, if not higher. And every year we kill over 70 billion land animals. That doesn't even count the fish um, because those are weighed by the pound or the ton. And um, in order to mass produce these animals, we have to grow the feed and have the water and also have the land and um, all of those things then get compromised because we're putting them in close quarters and um, they can get sick easy. We feed them foods that make them sick. So we have to pump them with antibiotics. We give them up to 400 different medications. And then um, the, because we're like raising so many, you end up having like a massive waste um, problem, you know, so like, where does their poop go and where does, into how does that, waste. it goes into our water. And so that also affects us. And, um, you know, for like every vegan, you, it, for, you need, it takes, um, so for like a meat eater, it, that would feed, um, 16 vegans, if that makes sense, right. The land amount. And, um, it, it's just, I could go on and on about the climate, but it's, it's something that, um, really affects me now and affects my kids. And like my son, he's 23 and he's like, I just don't know what to say to the generation, your generation, because you guys messed it up so much for us. So I feel like I want to try and um, have as much of an impact on that as possible, because I do feel like we're, we are responsible. Mm -hmm. And um, so the more people that understand that and make a change, it's um, not only good for you, you know, it's just, it's amazing. It's, it's mm -hmm. incredible how it's good for the planet. And then, you know, when you think about the animals, if they're in these close conditions, what it's like for them, um, I just couldn't even imagine because I'm claustrophobic. And to think about being, you know, like in a crate, like a, like a pig and the gestational crate or like the chickens. And it just mm -hmm. makes me feel like it just feels wrong. Um, and so it, anyway, it's explained in here. I don't want to like harp on that too much, but um, you also have like just different 
it's very visual book because I'm a super visual person. And so it has all the different um, alternatives and things like that in there and uh, fun, fun kid foods. And, um, you know, the, our recipes are more visual too. So it shows like the ingredients that way. Um, and then there's a, a journal in the back because that's how I was able to figure out what worked for me and help clear my, heal my illness was just tracking what I ate, how it made me feel, what recipes I made that I liked. Um, and you know, like how many poops I had in a day stuff like that. Just, it's like, you can track all of that and then, and, and follow and then decide, you know, what feels best for your body and how you can, um, kind of tailor your menu around that. Are all of your family members vegan? Um, two of my kids are vegan. My youngest is not. My husband is, I would say 95% vegan. Every once in a while he'll have cheese, but, um, I, I don't believe in forcing anyone to do it because I think it needs to be a personal choice. So my hope is that everyone will be hundred percent one day, but my husband, I never thought he'd be as close as he is now. Cause he was like the biggest meat eater ever. That's great. But do you cook only plant meals for your family? I do. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Yeah. And, um, my, uh, my son became a vegetarian way before we ever even were conscious of it. Mm -hmm. So he kind of was that underlying factor in our family. Um, my daughter is practically vegan. Um, and then my oldest son is not, uh, he only eats yellow and orange foods <laughs> and white foods anyway. So I don't know what that should that be like Doritos yeah. and Cheetos. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you do meal prep for him, and so yeah, he does do. end up eating a lot of yeah. whole food plant based because of it. It's funny because yeah. I hear them talking to their friends, and they they sound like they're saying things that I've said to them, which they've poo pooed me, but they're saying the same things to their friends now. So yeah. you definitely your actions speak louder than your words. So you know, I, I only serve plant based foods in our house um, at at Thanksgiving. There was many years ago I declared, nope, I'm not even making mm. turkey for anybody anymore. We're, we're eating this. If you want to eat something different, you have to go somewhere different. We can't, I can't bring any animal products into my house. I just can't. Like Brooke was saying, like, it breaks my heart. Like I can just sob, you know, I, yeah. I can't even watch those commercials that, um, that are on Facebook when people post that stuff. I it just, yeah. I know about it. So I don't want to see it because I can't stand animal suffering. But anyway. But Bouillant, former guest on the show, asks if you guys are familiar with Glenn Merzer's new book, Food is Climate. It's about the environment. Yeah, that, that's, that just came out, right? Yeah. I think Tiffany Wilkerson is featured in that. Yes. Um, she's got some recipes in there, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Oh, actually, yes. actually, we're going to have we're going to have a whole week devoted oh. to this book. We've had there Glenn and Dr. Silas Rowe on, on, I believe Love it was it. August 22nd, but Tiff, I don't know if Tiffany's on that week, but we're going to have all the, not all the chefs, but a week's worth of chefs doing recipes from the book. Yeah. Nice. That's, that's wonderful. Nice. Yeah. Well, people love recipes and yours seem very easy. Oh, here's one. Tammy says, can you make the cheese sauce with pecans instead of sunflower seeds? Mm. I've never tried it with pecans. I do it with cashews, yeah. but I don't know why you couldn't do it with pecans. I think it would be fine. Just make sure that you soak them. Yeah. Okay, pecans, don't you think the brown nuts have a much stronger flavor than the white nuts? I'm just, I, I mean, she should try it for sure. I just I have a mapley, have a mapley flavor. It I, might be good. You never know. That smoky maple flavor. That might be good. Um, yeah. I, I'd like to hear. I think you can do them with walnuts too. Yeah. You mm -hmm. never know. Anything that makes that creamy <laughs> base. Um, so you can buy their books on Amazon. Somebody's asking. And also if you just look in the show notes, but since you're watching on Facebook, you can't see the show notes. So hop on over to YouTube because we've got a lot written there, including the wonderful recipe. Thank you so much for sharing that, but still buy the book because there's <laughs> many other wonderful recipes in there. Other than buying the book, is there any way we can support your work? Do you guys have any activity going on on Instagram or Facebook where you like to refer people? Yeah, we have a Instagram account. Um, we have individual ones. I'm Brooke. What is it? Broccoli, broccoli, broccoli. Because if you say my name fast, it sounds like broccoli. broccoli. Yeah, it does. Broccoli, broccoli. I love it. Broccoli, broccoli. And then Dr. T. And then we have Wellness Twenty. And if you go on our website um, to get the book, with this one you get recipes included for seven minute meals. So we had like a thing where Patricia went through the drive through, and then I made a meal. And we raced and I beat her. So all those meals you can do quicker than driving through a drive through And then for hers, you get, um, you can, I don't remember. It's the, oh yes, we have, um, <laughs> sorry, we have so many different things, you know. 
Um, so with this book, Whole Food Plant Based, when you purchase this book, you'll get um, access to three different disease videos uh, talking about the significance of food for cancer, diabetes, and heart disease, three separate videos that, um, that we made. Yeah. I don't know how people are going to decide which one to buy. Maybe you should have made the book like this, where it's like glued together, <laughs> just one book, and then they get <laughs> like that. <laughs> nice. Well, good, because they both have a lot of great recipes. I'd get both of them personally. But yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they just come at they it from a different, they, yeah, they complement one another. If, it, if this is the science geeky kind of one, and this is really about the world and, and your, and, and your impact and uh, of your food choices. So both of those things together. Mm -hmm. um, but we, you know, we, we ended up, we didn't know, we ended up meeting and then hanging out and then partnering and confessed to each other that we had been writing books for a number of years. And we were like, you did, you are writing a book. I'm writing a book. And so that's where we decided well, my book is on this and my book is on this, but why don't we do complimentary books? So yeah, kind of like Patty you and the twins, if you ever saw yeah. <laughs> uh, What were their names? Patty and Kathy, right? Oh my gosh, that was a good one. That yeah, name? you're uh, Dr. Oh, T and Brooke Lee. I, I love that. I think you guys should do like some rap or something. You just yeah. didn't know. <laughs> well, guys, uh, congratulations on the book. Good luck with it. Hope you sell thank millions you. of copies and thank you so much for the work you do. Thank you for having us on today. We well, really my pleasure. Maybe you'll come back another time and do another recipe. Sure. We'd love to. We would love to. Thank you so much for all the work that you do too. Yeah. Thank you. you well, are, I'm with you. Great. We gotta save, we gotta, we got a planet to save because we won't have anywhere to live if we don't, right? <laughs> Your book Unprocessed was really instrumental in the beginnings of my veganism to oh, you had some great you. recipes. I love the recipe. I did that for a few people. We're actually we actually it was picked up by a publisher and it's coming out in a 10th anniversary edition. Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. With photos. So I'm very excited. I've never worked I with mean, a publisher too, before. It's wonderful. Thank One you more very time. much. You guys are lovely. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in two hours when my guest is Judy Finneran. She's the author of the B Plus Diet and she's lost over 220 pounds. Is that incredible? That's amazing. I mean, I hear that a lot though. I mean, it's, it is amazing, but yet it, it, it kind of is typical when people do this, you know, if they really stick to it. Yes. Yeah. I agree. All right. Well, let's get that youngest kid of yours on board. Yeah. Usually it's not the youngest one that's the problem because it's usually the, the ones that came first because they were more exposed. So that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, there's a story behind it, but yeah. <laughs> well, maybe take him to an animal sanctuary and have him meet his meat. Yes. That's, mm. you know, that, cause then, you know, you don't want to, uh, you know, traumatize them by showing them earthlings, but sometimes if you take them to a sanctuary, you just say, this is, this was your dinner. I, I watched earthlings like this. Oh, yeah. I couldn't even watch it. I, I just like, yeah, I look peak every two seconds and I'm like, okay, I can't. Oh, um, Linda says, where in North Texas are you? You don't have to give your exact address, but I mean, I guess the city. I'm in Highland Village. <laughs> We're in uh, North of Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, well, Plano. Plano. Yeah. Oh, Plano. Yes. I don't know if people have ever heard of Plano, but I like to change the O to T. Yeah, I was going to say Plano. Yeah. Or Plano. Plano. P-L-A-N-T. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's very clever. Very good. Well, thanks, ladies. It was so great catching up with you. Take Bye. care. Bye. Bye.